This is just going to be a quick introduction on how to find the domain of a function. In this video, we will focus on the rational function case and the square root function case. So let's have a look. For the first one, we have 2x minus 1 over 3x plus 5. First, the domain is a set of all possible x values that we can use for the function. But here, we have 3x plus 5 on the bottom. So there's a restriction whenever we have a rational function. More in general, if we have something on the top over another expression on the bottom, keep in mind, we cannot divide it by 0. So we have to make sure the bottom is not equal to 0. And that's how we set up the restriction on x. So right here, I will just have to go to the bottom. Just the bottom, the top can be 0. It's OK. Cannot be equal to 0. So all we have to do is 3x plus 5 not equal to 0 and so for x. Subtract 5 to both sides. Divide the 3 to both sides. Done. Here we are saying x can be any real number except for negative 5 over 3. Now, to write the domain, usually you would like to write, use interval notation or sometimes depending on your textbook or your instructor, they may use set-builder notation too. But I will use interval notation. So what this means is that I will show you on a number line to make it more clear. Here is negative 5 over 3. Well, we don't want that number, so I will put an open circle is that we are taking out that number. But anything else on the number line is fine. So we have this going to the left and also this going to the right. Now, for the domain, we have two pieces. The first piece, we go from negative infinity, right, because all the way to the left, and then for infinity or negative infinity, we never include that, so parentheses. And then we go up to negative 5 over 3. But since we are not including this number, so use parentheses. And then we are going to put down union because we have the other part. The union means we are going to put together with the other part. Here we have negative 5 over 3, not including that, and then we go all the way to the right, which is infinity, like this. So this is the domain for that function. Now let's look at another example. So here we have x minus 2 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. So we have this on the bottom. Just look at the bottom, make it not equal to 0. Seriously, the top is OK because 0 over anything that's non-zero is 0, which is legitimate. But anything over 0 is undefined. It's bad. So just the bottom. So here, x squared minus 4x plus 3 not equal to 0. And then factor it x minus 1, x minus 3. It's not equal to 0. So x minus 1 is not equal to 0. x minus 3 is not equal to 0. From here, x cannot be 1. From here, x cannot be 3. Now, this time we have two bad numbers that we cannot use for the function. Have a look at the number line. Here is 1, here is 3. Open circle, open circle. So taking out 1, taking out 3. But everything else is OK. So we have this piece, also the middle piece, and also this piece. First piece. We go from negative infinity up to 1, parentheses, parentheses, union 1 to 3, not including, not including, so parentheses, parentheses. Finally, 3 to infinity, parentheses, parentheses. There you have it. This is it. Now, for the third one, x minus 5 over x squared plus 4. Hmm, okay. This not equal to 0, so we have x squared plus 4 not equal to 0. We have the x squared part, so subtract 4 to both sides. Can we take the square root to both sides? Plus minus. Well, yeah, but this right here is what? Square root of a negative number, which is not real, right? This right here is not real. So that means 
there is no real x value that can make the button equal to zero and when we are finding the domain you remember it's a set of all real numbers so that x cannot be whatever right just like what we talked about earlier but this is not real so in fact you can use any x values because the bottom can never be zero with any real number so in fact for this right here the domain is just negative infinity to infinity because the bottom can never be equal to zero with any real numbers so that's it now the next one we have a square root 3 plus square root of x plus 2 okay so it's another scenario just like what we talked about earlier square root of a negative number is a no go right you get non-real result so when we have a square root part when we're talking about function focus on just the inside just the inside we will have to make sure the inside just the inside or right? let me just like write it out specifically just the inside is greater than or equal to zero all right otherwise we get non-real result but zero is okay, square root zero is okay, that's why here we are including the zero. So, knowing this, all we have to do is to look at the inside and then make it greater than or equal to zero. So, x plus 2, make it greater than or equal to zero. What happened to the 3 on the outside? It doesn't matter, it's just chilling on the outside, you know, just don't worry about it. It's not going to cause any trouble. Alright, subtract 2 to both sides, x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Now, what we are saying is that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2 in order for this function to work. So that means negative 2 here, close circle, we only go to the right. So we only have one direction here. We go from negative 2 all the way to infinity. This time though, we are including the negative 2. So square bracket, infinity, just always use parentheses. And that's a domain for that. Now, what if we had 3 over x plus square root of x plus 2? Now, we still do this because just like what we did earlier, right? The inside of the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So in fact, that's the first condition. x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. So that means x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But this time, this is not just a 3 but rather we have 3 over x. So this, we have to remember the first case. The bottom cannot be 0. So we have to implement that condition. So the second case is x cannot be 0. And that's actually done because it's just x cannot be equal to 0. Now, how do we write the interval notation? Again, let's have a look at the number line. So here is negative 2, and then it's a closed circle, and then we go all the way to the right. So it's like. So here's the number line. Here is negative 2, closed circle, and then we go all the way to the right, like this. But now, because x cannot be 0, which happens to be somewhere here, right? So let's make a mark. Here is 0. We have to take away 0 and then make it like an open circle like that. So we have one piece, two pieces. So for the first one, we go from negative 2 to 0 and then we have to stop. Including the negative 2 but not including 0. And then pick that from 0 and we go all the way to infinity. So it's just that earlier but here we are missing the zero. Now, one more. Square root of 6 minus 2x over 2x plus 10. So first, we have some expression inside of the square root, right? So this part, I'm going to implement it right here. 6 minus 2x has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? Just like what we said for number two right here. But in this case, we also have 2x plus 10 on the bottom. So we have to go back to the first case we will have to say the bottom cannot be 0. So I'm going to put that down right here. So the second condition is 2x plus 10 cannot be equal to 0. Now let's focus on the first one. 
I'm going to subtract the 6 to both sides, so this is negative 2x, still greater than or equal to, but negative 6. When you subtract a number to both sides, you do not flip the inequality. But next, we will have to divide both sides by negative 2. So this and that cancel, but negative 2 was negative, so x, now you switch the inequality to a less than or equal to. And that is just a number 3. Okay, that's the first part. Now the second part is what? 2x plus 10 is not equal to 0. Subtract 10 to both sides. And then divide the 2 to both sides. So that will give us x not equal to negative 5. All right, so two conditions. Let's have a look right here. All right, so let's say here is 3. x less than we equal to 3. There's an equal sign, yeah? So open circle. And we go to the left. You don't go back and forth. I'm just trying to shade this in. <laughs> OK. And then we happen to have x cannot be negative 5, which happens to be somewhere right here, right? Let's say it's right here. That's negative 5. But take away that number, make it open circle. So now two pieces again. So finally, domain for the first one, we go from negative infinity to negative 5, parentheses, parentheses, union, negative 5, comma, 3, parentheses, but this right here is square bracket. Now, that's it. So finding a domain is just like this. This is just introduction. It could be harder. Just check out my other video for it because you also have to talk about hmm, what if the inside is a quadratic, or maybe what if the expression is more complicated, or maybe what if we have logarithms? But that will be for later on.